Geomestic channel. In today's lesson, we will investigate a fifth and final way to prove that two triangles are congruent. If you haven't already, go down to the description and find the links to the guided notes. If it's helpful for you to follow along and write some things down, I encourage you to do so. Now, we've already looked at four different triangle congruence rules, namely side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Uh, if you haven't seen those yet, go back and find those videos. But in this lesson, we're dealing specifically with um, a case that can only be used in right triangles, and this is called the hypotenuse leg theorem. Now, a quick review on right triangles. What makes a triangle a right triangle is, of course, a right angle. And some terms that you'll see used are the two sides that are included uh, with that right angle are called the legs of a right triangle. And then the third side, the longest side, which is opposite of the right angle, so I think on the other side, this longest side is called the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm gonna be using these terms as we go through today's lesson. So the hypotenuse leg theorem. So like I said, it's a fifth way to prove that two triangles are congruent. And what the hypotenuse leg theorem says HLT, hypotenuse leg theorem. What it says is that if we have two triangles, got triangle ABC, and another triangle XYZ, and in those two triangles, number one, we know that they are right triangles, and then we've got the hypotenuse of each triangle congruent to one another along with one of the other legs. Okay, so again, we have a right triangle, two right triangles with hypotenuse, and one pair of legs congruent. That's what the hypotenuse leg theorem says will cause these two triangles to be congruent. So if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then these two triangles are congruent. Now you'll probably notice that this is technically a situation where you have angle side side. And if you remember, you may recall in general, side side angle is not sufficient to prove the two triangles are congruent. Well, there's one exception and that's this situation here. So if the angle is a right angle, this will be sufficient to prove the two triangles are congruent. Um, if you wanna know why side side angle isn't quite enough to prove the two triangles are congruent, check out that video. Uh, on this channel as well. Now, when you're proving two triangles congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem, your proof is gonna look a little different compared to the other triangle congruence options that we've um, used. And the reason it's different is because the criteria is different. So there are three statements that must be present in a proof using hypotenuse leg. So let's cover those. So there are three statements. Necessary. Spelling. Three statements necessary to use the hypothesis like there. Number one. So number one, we have to state in our proof that the triangles are right triangles. Okay, first and foremost, again, this only works if the triangles are right triangles. So in our proof, we have to state that the triangles are right triangles. Number two, we have to have a pair of congruent legs. Okay, somehow, some way, we have to have one pair of congruent legs. And number three, we've got to have the hypotheses congruent to one another. 
Um, so what I've noticed that in this case, this one right here is probably the one that gets left off the most. Sometimes it's obvious that the triangle is a right triangle, but you might forget to state that in your statements. So um, don't forget about this one. The triangles have to be right triangles, even if it looks obvious that the triangles are right triangles, unless it specifically states that somewhere, uh, you, you don't really know. So you have to be able to state that the triangles are right triangles. How do you do that? Well, let's look at some examples. So let's do a couple of proofs. Again, these might look a little bit different, um, but they follow the same idea as your other triangle congruence properties. Okay, two triangles here, W, X, Y, Z. Some given information. We'll say angle W and angle Y. right angles, and also we'll say WX is congruent to segment YZ. And here we're going to try to prove that triangle ZWX is congruent to triangle XYZ. Okay. Okay, so to set up our proof, as always, first step, start with what you know. So we've got angle W and angle Y, or right angles. In my statements, I always abbreviate. So I say angle W and angle Y, right angles. How do we know? It is good. As always, helpful to mark the picture to see what you're doing here. So angle W and angle Y are right angles little box in the corner there. Okay, next, I'll go ahead and get the other piece of given information in here. So WX segment YZ are congruent. Also given. And marking that in the picture. WX So if we think back to our three-part criterion, we need to state that these triangles are right triangles. Are these triangles right triangles? Well, yeah, they've got right angles. That is the definition of a right triangle. If a triangle has a right angle in it, it is a right triangle. We still have to state that. Okay, so that's gonna be our next statement. We're gonna state triangle Z, W, X, and triangle X, Y, Z, are right triangles. Reason for that, they have right angles. That's the definition of a right triangle. Definition of a right triangle. Okay, so that's step one in our three part um, criteria. Step two in the three part criteria is we have to have a pair of congruent legs. Fortunately, that's right here, W, X, and Y, Z. You can see in these two triangles, those two segments are two legs. So we've got that down. The third step we have to have is the congruent hypotenuses. So where is the hypotenuse for each of these two triangles? You can see it right there down the middle. And both of those triangles share that side. I can always mark a shared side. ZX is the hypotenuse and it is congruent to itself. So I'm gonna say ZX is congruent to ZX, which is the reflexive property. Okay. So once again, statement two is the pair of legs. We've got that. Statement three is stating that the triangles are right triangles. That was part one. And then the last part, stating that the tri uh, triangles have congruent hypotenuses. That's right there. So with those three things in our proof, we have enough information to say that those two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg there. So to finish it off, triangle 
CWX, congruent to triangle XYZ. By the hypotenuse like theorem. That's good. Okay, we'll try one more. Gonna ramp up the difficulty a little bit here. All right. Okay, so in this situation, we're gonna be given that B is the midpoint of segment EC. We're also going to say that segment AD is perpendicular to segment EC. And then finally, segment AE is congruent to segment CD. And with that information, we're going to prove that triangle A, E, B is congruent to triangle D, C, B. All right. Let's get started with what we know. B is the midpoint. B is midpoint of segment EC, which is given. Okay. What does that tell us? B is the midpoint of EC. B is the middle point halfway between segment E, or sorry, point E and point C. What can we conclude based on that information? The distance from E to B and the distance from C to B will have to be the same distance. So EB is going to be congruent to CB, which will state EB congruent to CB. How do we know? Because B was the midpoint of EC. That's the definition of a midpoint. Definition of midpoint. Okay, so just looking at this picture, um, that's going to be a pair of legs. We don't really have right angles yet. We'll get there in a second. Uh, but you'll see that that's going to be the congruent pair of legs, which we'll have to have. Okay, next. Number three. Something else that's given here. I'm going to skip down here to this last given piece. AE, segment AE, is congruent to segment CD. Which is given. And if I mark that in the picture... AE congruent to CD. So it's another pair of sides, and those sides will in fact be the hypotenuses, which we'll see once again here in a second. So we've already got two pairs of sides. We only need um, that these are right triangles. That's really the last thing that we have to get. So how are we going to get that? Let's talk about perpendicular. If you remember, perpendicular lines are lines that cross or intersect at 90 degree angles. So, AD being perpendicular to EC, that's going to get me my right angles. So let's get that in our statements. AD is perpendicular to EC, which was given. And because AD, which is here, is perpendicular to EC, we know that at that intersection we're going to have right angles. So I can go ahead and put those in right here. So those are going to be right angles because AD and EC are perpendicular. So let's get that in here. So angle ABE, angle A, B, E, and angle DBC are right angles. Okay, now notice I didn't say that they were congruent. They are congruent because they are both 90 degrees 
triangle. That's not what the criteria for HL says. We have to know that these are right triangles. And in order to say that they're right triangles, I have to know that I have right angles in those triangles. So stating that ABE and DBC are right angles, given from the perpendicular lines, so that's the definition of perpendicular. So because those lines are perpendicular, these angles are right angles. And because those angles are right angles, I can say that triangle AEB and triangle DB or DCB DCB are right triangles. And we know they're right triangles because that is the definition of a right triangle if it's got a right angle in it. So this is the definition of a right triangle. And that is our third piece of information that we need. So the three parts, state that the triangle is a right triangle, we've got that. Have a pair of congruent legs, we've got that right here. And then the congruent hypotenuse, which is step number three, we've got that. So all three parts are given, or sorry, are, all three parts are stated in our statements. So we can use HL, we've got all three parts. So last but not least, what are we trying to prove? We are proving that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle DCB. By the hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, a little bit longer on this one, but as long as we get those three pieces of information into our statements, we'll be able to use hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, thanks for watching today. Uh, if you found this helpful, please, please, the best thing you can do for me is to share this video with somebody else that you think this would be helpful for. Uh, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if these videos um, are what you need. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.